Good day gentle people, it's your favorite Mr. 42. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. Because I'm back with my favorite plane of all time, the SR-71. So Adam, what are we gonna do today? I'm gonna look at two clips. Look at the navigation system of this plane. We're gonna skip the navigation system because he's not going to make a claim about it. And then we're gonna look at the globe maths and the top speeds related to this plane, which of course highlight the absurdity of the globe earth theory. Excellent. Another chance to expose your stupidity. First up, let's have a look at a couple of short clips of this incredible, beautiful plane. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. I mean, just look at it. It's literally a work of art. Oh yes, it's a beautiful plane, Adam. And Inquisitor Bacon agrees. Even now, all these years later, there's nothing about that comes anywhere near as fast or as beautiful as this plane. Its beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If that's your opinion, that's great, man. But speed is something measurable, and you're dead wrong about that. The ISS is eight times faster, and in more recent events, both Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin match the speed. Absolutely incredible. Let's see this bad boy take off. Hold it. Reverse image. Keep it. You think it took off there, from the beginning of the runway. Oh dear. Nothing better than a work of art that absolutely annihilates the globe pantomime. Nothing about this proves or disproves the shape of the earth. Now I'm over at Wiki, the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. Of course I want to get the top speed here, specifications. Maximum speed at 80,000 feet, maximum speed 2,200 miles an hour. This thing could fly at maximum speed for 1.3 hours. So for 1.3 hours, the SR-72 could do 2,200 miles an hour non-stop. Pretty incredible to say the least. And rather damning as we're about to see. Get on with it! Bear with me. So I've got my 2,200 mile an hour figure regarding the SR-71, what it does at top speed. Now I'm at the Earth Curve Calculator. I want to see how much curvature this plane has to encounter, according to the globe mathematics, over the course of one hour's flight, okay? Everything I'm doing here today is based on one hour's flight and then I'm breaking it down and dissecting it using the globe maths to highlight how absurd this globe is. Spoiler alert! The only thing he gets to highlight is how little he understands about, well, everything. No, you'll notice I've put in an eye height of zero. The plane supposedly tracing the curvature of the Earth, so I've put in zero. Essentially the plane's mimicking the curvature of the Earth, but obviously in the air, as it supposedly remains level as it goes round a ball, okay? More on that later in this video. So I want to know how much curvature this plane has to encounter over the course of an hour. So I calculate. And I get a figure of over 3 million feet, okay? Ridiculous amount. As usual, Adam gets confused by big numbers. I'll convert that to miles now. So that actually converts to 570 miles of curve or drop this plane has to encounter over the course of one hour's travel. The incorrect flat earth claim is that aircraft must descend to follow the curvature. Why is this wrong? It is wrong because they calculate from a stationary observer position. The calculation should be done at the location of the aircraft. You'll notice here on the diagram I put two points of reference. A, the start, 
be 60 minutes later, the end of the hour. And according to the Globe Maths, when we break this down, bearing in mind here, this whole video is based on one hour's travel by the SR-71. Yes, we are aware, Adam. That's how it's even more hilarious how wrong you are. If you're going to do it any other way, i.e. come up with any other figures, I need to see you break it down from an hour to a minute to a second. No, we don't. Those numbers are completely irrelevant. That accurately demonstrates how an aircraft can follow the curvature of the Earth by simply maintaining altitude. This simulator considers aerodynamics and physics, looking at the many forces acting on an aircraft in flight, including lift, weight, thrust and drag. The simulator shows how these forces interact with the changing direction of gravity as the aircraft follows the curvature of the Earth and that causes the attitude of the aircraft to follow the curvature of the Earth while the altitude remains constant. So Adam wants us to use the wrong methods to demonstrate how it works. If not, I'm just going to block and delete your comment. As simple as that. What can I say? He's honest about his dishonesty, I guess? If you're going to try and refute me, then you need to show me the mathematics for one second, a minute and an hour. And it has to match the base figure for an hour, which is 570 miles of curve, stroke drop, according to the globe maths, it has to be that figure matching your model. And then you break it down from there. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Any other way, and you're literally cheating and trying to flatten the curve, all right? No, Adam, that's literally what you are doing right now. So take note of that if you're gonna try and refute this video. I'm afraid the globe maths and this plane is gonna make a mockery of you. So we know there's drop of 570 miles between these two points of reference, which the plane travels over the course of an hour. When I break that down to a minute, that translates to every minute this plane has to encounter and drop nine and a half miles a minute. The incorrect flat earth claim is that aircraft must descend to remain level on a ball as the aircraft follows the curvature of the earth. And that causes the attitude of the aircraft to follow the curvature of the earth while the altitude remains constant according to the globe map. Following basic physical laws. Yes, science! Now, if I was to break that down to a second now, according to the globe mathematics, this plane, if the Earth was a globe, based on an hour's travel, would have to literally drop 836 feet every single second. The incorrect flat Earth claim is that aircraft must descend to remain level on a ball. Now let's watch what happens if you apply the correct math based on reality. You'll notice as the aircraft is following the curvature, the altitude is remaining constant, the speed is remaining constant, the angle of attack is 2.9 degrees. That is also remaining constant. The velocity vector is always on the line of horizontal because the aircraft is flying a tangent to the Earth's curve at all times. The aircraft is maintaining a slight nose-up pitch, which is generating that angle of attack. That's clearly ridiculous. Sure, Adam. Got any more stupidity to say? And of course, every second it's not dropping 836 feet a second, it then needs to make up for the amount it hasn't dropped. Oh, Adam, it was not a challenge. Sorry about that. This plane just highlights the absurdity of level earth observer i don't think there's a better plane on earth to top it all off let's take a look of the view from the cockpit of your favorite plane that looks curved to me sure there's barrel distortion let's find another picture here camera pointed dead center at the horizon so no distortion whatsoever and what do you know a beautiful curve flat earthers will say these images are cherry picked but this one is not a nice CGI image Adam chose for himself as a thumbnail for his video. And with that we are gonna leave it for today. Adam will need time to study the correct globe mathematics. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And in the description you will find links to my socials like Discord and Twitter. This has been Mr. 42, out. Don't panic.